for the first time in three years, home prices have fallen. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Real Estate Power Moves. My name is James J. And I am excited because I've missed you guys. I've been out for a few days with COVID. It sucked, but uh, I am back and feeling rejuvenated. Uh, it's amazing how you miss things when you can't do them, just being able to leave your house <laughs> or leave a room. So anyway, I'm glad to be back with you guys. And today we're gonna jump into an article from Black Knight. This is in reference to the home prices that we are slowly seeing decline, decline, decline. This is good news for buyers right now as we are again making that shift from the crazy seller's market to more of a buyer's market. And again, we're not there yet, but we're slowly seeing that shift happen, all right? Again, remember, a healthy market where it's not crazy seller, crazy buyer advantage one way or the other, is about six months of inventory. We're not there yet, but we are working our way towards there. So let's jump into the article. The article starts off, home prices fell for the first time in three years last month, and it was the biggest decline since 2011. It continues, home prices declined 0.77% from June to July, the first monthly fall in nearly three years. That's according to Black Knight. While the drop may seem small, it is the largest single month decline in prices since January of 2011. It was also the second worst July performance dating back to 1991 behind the 0.9% decline in July of 2010 during the Great Recession. Okay, so let me say that again. It is the largest monthly decline that we've seen since January of 2011. So we're seeing a lot of changing going on right now as we're now beyond the peak summer buying months. Now we're gonna start to head into that fourth quarter and we're gonna start to see a little bit of a slowdown. Now, there's always seasonality in the real estate industry. And once school starts in late August into September for most people, we always start to see a slowdown a little. Now, with this year, with the higher interest rates, the prices that were very high, now we're seeing a little bit of a break in those prices. I think the slowdown is gonna be a little more for the end of 2022. Once we get back into 2023, I think we're gonna start to see a little bit of a pickup. Now, if you haven't paid attention the last couple weeks or so, interest rates have kind of been all over the place. We were dropping a little, and now we're starting to see those interest rates creep right back up closer to that 6% mark. So if you're looking to take advantage of where we are right now with the prices coming down, again, remember, marry the house, date the rate. Marry the house, date the rate. What I mean by that is again, pricing, although we are seeing some declines in pricing, we're not going to see a crazy drop off with these prices. They're going to be price reductions. We're already seeing it across the board from resale to new construction. I see the incentives being offered now for buyers. I see sellers now willing to pay for some closing costs, pay for a home warranty. So we're getting back to normal. That's what we're getting back to. Now, housing affordability is at its lowest level in 30 years. It requires 32.7% of the median household income to purchase the average home using a 20% down payment on a 30-year mortgage. Again, this is according to Black Knight. That is about 13 percentage points more than it did entering the pandemic and significantly more than both the years before and after the Great Recession. The 25 year average is 23.5%. Now the reality is most people don't put down 20%, right? Most people will not put down 20%. On an FHA loan, you only need three and a half. That's typically what people will do. On a conventional loan, if you're a first time buyer, 3%. If you're not a first time buyer, 5%. That's kind of the minimum. There are very few people that put down 20% on a 30 year mortgage. Now, all this talk as far as the percentage of income that it takes now to support a home payment. This is huge. And that's obviously been eroded away by the higher interest rates and higher home prices, which is causing a lot of people to still 
sit out until things get a little more stable, probably more so with interest rates than home prices. So I will ask you, what are your plans for purchasing a home in 2022? I wanna get your feedback. Let me know in the comments below. According to Black Knight, they have been advising for quite some time that the dynamic between interest rates, housing inventory, and home prices was untenable from an affordability perspective. And at some point, something would have to give. Further price corrections are likely on the horizon as we move into what are typically more neutral seasonal months for the housing market. Now, this is also something that I've been shouting for several months, even since February. Go back and look at some of those videos. As of February, March, as I saw prices soaring, as I saw interest rates soaring, I've been saying for months now, there's no way we're gonna be able to maintain this, no way. And I think a lot of people saw the writing on the wall. And if you're a buyer and you were also waiting, good news, things are changing in your favor. So when we look at what was going on in the first quarter, second quarter of 2022, we saw what was happening with affordability, okay? We are now seeing some cracks in the wall, essentially, in the sense that now the affordability is a little better with prices on homes. It's a little better. Now, keep in mind, guys, we were red hot. Actually, we were white hot. Now we're red hot, right? So although prices are coming down, we're still at a shortage right now. I will continue to harp on this. We're still at a shortage overall. Now, there are markets across the country that are absolutely cutting prices like crazy. But, but overall, we're going to see these prices level off. We're already seeing it. As we move forward into the end of 2022, into 2023 and beyond, prices are going to just level off. So the rate that prices increase, the rate of appreciation that people have seen since the pandemic in their homes, they're not going to see that anymore. We're gonna get back to a more normal appreciation level, all right? This has been nothing but unusual appreciation that we've seen over the last 24 months or so. So we're gonna get back to some normalcy pretty soon. So if you're a home buyer, hang in there. If you're a home seller, it's still not a bad time to sell a home. We're just getting back to more of a normal market. So your home may sit a little longer on the market. It's normal, all right, it's normal. So don't be so concerned that your home didn't sell in a week, okay? That's not normal. We need to get back to a healthy market and we are slowly making our way there. So let's jump back into the article. Prices historically rise on average 0.4% between June and July. Because the market is heavily weighted towards families buying larger or more expensive homes, families like to move during the summer months when school is out. Even during the Great Recession, home prices typically rose marginally from March through May due to the seasonality of the market. All the price declines during the era happened in the months from July through February. Now, some local markets are seeing even steeper declines. I kind of mentioned this earlier in the video over the last few months. San Jose, California, um, you got San Francisco, San Diego. These are all really high cost cities. And I mentioned Denver several weeks ago at the price cuts that they're seeing out there. So we're definitely seeing some adjustments all across the country with pricing and we're getting back to a healthy market. Now keep in mind, home prices are still just over 14% higher in the month of July, 2022, 14% higher than it was in July of 2021. So we're seeing a lot of things being corrected in this market from prices, which I don't, again, so I'm gonna say this again, prices are not going to drop at the level that they went up. We're already seeing those adjustments, but they're not going to fall at the same level as they rose. We're just going to level off a lot with price appreciation. And so again, there's gonna be opportunity for home buyers in this market. Hang in there, do not be discouraged. Get your credit in order, get your finances together. And if you're not ready right now, you can get yourself in a position when the opportunity presents itself, you're gonna be in a strong financial position. So. Credit assets, make sure your credit is in order. Keep your credit card balances low, right? Keep them low. Keep them at about 10% or less, ideally 10%. I'd say 10. You're gonna hear other people say 30, I say 10. 
10% or less of what's available on your credit line, you will maximize your credit score by doing this, okay? Make sure your payments are on time, guys. Late payments on any type of debt is going to crush your score, and so do maxed out credit limits. Those are the two biggest things that I see that will kill a credit score. So if you've got question, if you've got value from this video, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And remember, don't just make a move, make a power move. I will see you guys on the next video. Go check it out.